yourselves, gentlemen. For what? For pictures, man. Need pictures. Extraordinary. Hey, Garris, look at these markings. Two more. Well, this is highly unusual. Ah! Viene. No está muerto. It's impossible. They should be dead. Worried about dinosaurs. This place just gives me the creeps. Senor. Directed by Frank Marshall and written by Don Jacoby, Al Williams and Wesley Strick, Arachnophobia is a 1990 comedic thriller. The film stars Jeff Daniels, Julian Sands, Harley Jane Kozak and more, and details the struggle of a small California town overrun by a species of killer arachnids. Hey guys, what's happening? Niet here with Film Comics Explained, and as requested, today we're tackling Arachnophobia. Sapper's ready, come and get it. The deadly Photus manly spiders in Arachnophobia are the offspring of an exceptionally rare spider found in Venezuela. In the lowered sinkhole area of the rainforest, the species live at the top of the food chain, laying their nest in a central location before spreading out and dominating the surrounding area. During a research trip organized by a respected entomologist, the spiders are found and noted as being drones with no reproductive organs, making them akin to soldiers in a basic caste system. Unfortunately, their progenitor, appropriately named the General, finds its way to the US, where it mates with a common house spider, creating an army of infertile but highly aggressive and deadly offspring. Unlike their massive father, who's over a foot in length, they measure just under an inch, but retain his deadly venom and aggression. With no towering mountains to contain them, the spawn quickly spread out around the neighborhood, attacking any and all threats. Hunkering down in a nearby cellar, the general mates with yet another spider, attempting to further their evolution and dominate the gene pool. And together they will construct a primary nest, but eventually she will create reproductive offspring of her own, and when that happens, this town is dead. The General is essentially a super aggressive predator with significant speed, stealth, and lethality. While his primary weapon is his venom, the General often defies spider logic, occasionally charging and pouncing on his victims outright. Like their father, his offspring are highly aggressive, intelligent, and just as venomous. While most spiders don't attack unless threatened, these spiders go out of their way to hunt and kill every other predator in sight. Using their relatively small size, they favor stealth, lurking in dark and damp spaces, finding strength in numbers, and swarming their targets with brutality. In reality, spider bites can bring on a variety of effects, but they're often far less deadly than those seen in the film. At the very least, getting a spider bite can bring about itchiness and discomfort, while the worst bite might put you in the emergency room, or even six feet under. With their three separate poison sacs, the Photus manly spiders are able to inject enough poison in one chomp that victims suffer from painful convulsions, tightness in the chest, and partial paralysis, followed by death in less than a minute. Oh, These symptoms are actually similar to that of the Black Widow spider, although paralysis is rare in spider venom and more commonly seen in snakes, poison dart frogs, putter fish and other venomous animals. Arachnophobia starts off in the gorgeous wilderness of Venezuela, where photographer Mark L. Taylor's Jerry Manley meets up with a research team led by entomologist Dr. Atherton, played by Julian Sands. Trekking into the nearby rainforest, the team searches for new discoveries, reveling in the beauty of the untouched natural world. It's just a spider, what's a big deal? It wasn't just a spider, it was potentially a new species of spider. All you could do is squash it. They soon discover a new species of spider and capture a few specimens, along with the rest of their haul, unaware that their progenitor had snuck into their cargo. Back at base camp, Jerry tries to alleviate a fever with a quick power nap, but his snooze is interrupted by a swift bite from a sneaky spider. Discovering his body, they chalk his death up to natural causes, unaware that the general is now hitching a one-way ride to the US in Jerry's coffin. The body is then offloaded at a funeral home in the fictional town of Canema, California. Surviving the trip by feeding off of the body, the spider flees and makes its way outside, eventually winding up in the yard of Jeff Daniels' Ross Jennings, who also happens to be the new guy in town. 
Ross, the entire town is yours. You're the doctor. I mean, can there be a more respected figure? Ah, uh, respect is fine, but actually I've always wanted to be feared. Tired of the stressful city life in San Francisco, Ross and his wife Molly, played by Harley Jane Kozak, have moved to Kanema, where he's set to take over as the town's new doctor. Ross in particular struggles with his newfound country life, exacerbated by his overwhelming fear of spiders. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to him or his family, the general has chosen his barn as a breeding ground. When the current town's physician, Henry Jones's Dr. Metcalf, changes his mind about retiring, the stress only continues to mount, with Ross's prospects for new clients dwindling. He panicked. But he told you, uh, we looked in 14 different towns, we bought a house, you rented an office. What are we going to do? While Ross rubs shoulders with the quirky townsfolk at a housewarming party, the General's offspring start to explore the neighborhood, killing one of their neighbors in a bite that is ruled as a heart attack by Dr. Metcalf the next morning. Having discovered the body himself, Ross disagrees, beginning a feud between the doctors. If you're ever going to fit in in Kanaima, you better learn to be sensitive to the feelings of the good people I'm here. sorry I'm more interested in medicine than public relations. Back at the Jennings household, Molly greets the eccentric pest exterminator Delbert, played by John Goodman, who inspects the wine cellar for bugs, but finds none and blames the crumbling foundation as simply bad wood. Things around town only grow grimmer, as a high school football player is bitten and killed by a spider during practice a few days later. The two doctors continue to have disagreements over the potential cause of death, but Ross is vindicated soon after, when Metcalf is bitten and perishes in front of his wife. Noticing a spider bite on his foot, Ross orders an autopsy, which indicates a small amount of an unknown toxin in the body. I think we've got a big problem here in Kanaima. They've got three dead bodies, and the cause of death seems to be a spider more deadly than any I've ever seen. Believing the town has become infested with deadly spiders, he then reaches out to Dr. Atherton for help, coincidentally contacting the man who enabled the whole fiasco in the first place. Realizing the species Atherton discovered in Venezuela was responsible for the attacks, they whip up a plan to save the town by killing the general and destroying his offspring. Following the death of more people, including Atherton, who locates the nest at Ross's home, Jennings rescues his family and overcomes his arachnophobia with a well-timed shot from a nail gun. One of the things I learned in my second unit directing days was the only way that this is going to be scary is to include the spiders in the same shot with the actors. Arachnophobia was the directorial debut of Frank Marshall, known for co-producing tons of successful films with Steven Spielberg, including Raiders of the Lost Ark, Poltergeist, The Goonies, and many more. Pre-production was relatively smooth, with Frank securing a $22 million budget to desired cast members and distribution through Hollywood Studios, a subdivision of Walt Disney Pictures. While the initial story was written by Dan Jacoby and Al Williams, most of the energy and excitement in the script is the result of tireless revisions from screenwriter Wesley Strick. The weather is ever-changing. Uh, some days I would just get one take, and this one day we were trapped the whole day. We had actually built the survival camp and 15 minutes before we were going to be stuck all night. While getting the project off the ground was easy enough, the actual production phase would prove to be more difficult. The movie was primarily filmed in Cambria, California, but the intro sequence was filmed on location at the Canema National Park in Venezuela. Between hauling camera equipment through the jungle and the extreme weather of the region, obtaining satisfactory footage was very tough, with the Venezuela shoot taking over four weeks. The other difficulty revolved around the use of real spiders on set, which are of course notoriously unreliable and hard to control. First time I saw the script, I said, oh boy, how are they going to do this? How do you make a spider crawl into a slipper? How do you control masses of spiders? You really can't train spiders, but you can take advantage of their behavior. After holding what Marshall dubbed the Spider Olympics, the team found that the Avondale spiders looked great on camera and were also easier to control than the other candidates, which included tarantulas, wolf spiders, and traditional huntsmen. And while the Avondale spiders were easy to work with, the Goliath tarantula that played the general was far moodier, often causing issues for the cast and crew, kind of like Marlon Brando at the end of his career. To make things easier, a 15-inch mechanical model was created for on-screen use by none other than Jamie Hindman, who would go on to co-host the popular television show Mythbusters. After a marketing campaign that labeled the movie as the first ever thrillomedy, Arachnophobia was released in theaters on July 18, 1990, hitting third place at the box office behind Ghost and Die Hard 2. Pulling in 53 million at the box office and an additional 30 million in the home video market, the film would end up earning more than twice its budget. While it didn't permeate pop culture in the same way as 1975's Jaws, Arachnophobia had a few cross-meter adaptations, including a novelization, a comic series, and even a retro video game. 
For us here, Arachnophobia is a smartly written film with memorable scares, endearing characters, and a whimsical touch that helps it hold up to this day. But with that said, of course, we'd love to hear what you guys thought about the movie, so please share that in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, come join our regular streams on Twitch, and uh, yeah, if you have any other suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.